what's going on YouTube this is your man Jay thank you for tuning in today we're doing something a little different we're always doing something a little different here on the channel just trying to add new content I'm going to be talking about Daredevil the man without fear this was a five issue run written by Frank Miller art by John Romita jr. and uh, published October 1993 and the reason I brought this up was I've been uh, seeing all well, the SJW stuff with all the comic books, and they've been sounding pretty horrible lately. And uh, so that inspired me to go get my old comic books. Now I probably have five long boxes of comic books that I was collecting as I was a kid. And I want to go back and read those just for the fact that, you know, when you're reading stuff when you're 8, 10 years old, you really don't understand it and you don't grasp it. So I want to go back and read that as an adult some 20-something years later and uh, just see if I could enjoy the stories better. And one thing that I've noticed, too, on some of these modern books is that the art is just horrible. And uh, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to go read my old comic books, and maybe I'll discuss them here on the channel. Uh, like I said, I have five boxes. But this is by far one story arc, uh, this five-issue miniseries that has stuck with me forever. Anytime anyone brings up comic books, anytime anyone brings up Daredevil, this is the book that I think about. And so what I'm going to do is start with issue one, and we'll go along and do videos on the other four issues. So, and this is published October 1993. Uh, I didn't even think it was that old, but yeah. Uh, so we have these foil, the Daredevil and all these colors, all these covers is this red foil, which is really reflective, it's really cool. Uh, I think John Romita Jr. does a good substitute for Frank Miller's art. Um, when everybody talks about the Dark Knight Rises or the Dark Knight Returns, this is my Dark Knight Returns. This is my favorite story pretty much of all time. And it's just an origin story of Daredevil, talking about how he is. You know, it goes from he's a boy to a teenager to college student to at the end he finally becomes Daredevil. So, issue one, this is Dare uh, about a teenage Matt Murdock. This is his father. Uh, in case you didn't know, his father was a boxer and ends up getting killed by the mob. And they talk about here uh, how he gets his uh, powers and all that good stuff. So I really love this. Really love this series. This was actually for his 30th. 30th anniversary. Daredevil's 30th anniversary they released this. Again, yeah, look at this art. And I don't think they were doing using too much computers back then. You know, maybe for coloring and things like that. You can tell there's some, like, shading. And it's not just like four color art, I don't think, but I'm not a, I'm not a comic book pro, so I don't know exactly how the process works. Um, but here you have a young Matt Murdock sitting in Hell's Kitchen, just listening to the stuff. It says, it talks about here, gives insight on how Matt was as a boy. And this is during the summer, so summertime in the, in the Manhattan neighborhood of Hell's Kitchen. The days are bright and hot and full of mischief. And nights are cool and restless with the hum of the city calling to this boy Matt Murdock. If anybody's ever lived in the city, I lived in Chicago when I was a boy. Uh, not the best part of Chicago, actually. It's probably full of uh, um, um, yuppies or, or, or hipsters right now, but back in the day, uh, it was not. And one thing you notice is that, uh, you know, the houses are old. They don't have that great air conditioning. There's no central air, you know, so you have a bunch of wall units. So, you know, you're not able to afford air conditioning in every room of the house. And so you have to have uh, uh, wall units. And uh, so this is totally acceptable. You know, the building I lived in, it was just a three-story house, so it didn't have any um, fire escapes. But, yeah, we'd have open all the windows. It was... It was, it was uh, uh, summertime, all the windows are open. You slept with the windows open, and then you hear sirens and just the sounds of the city. You know, granted, it wasn't downtown, but still, even though it was Chicago, it was active. So you kind of, the way Frank Miller's describing this, you could almost hear them. Like, you can kind of, it gets, sets the tone of how Hell's Kitchen is. It's crowded, it's hot, uh, and it's, uh, and Matt Murdock, you know, it's not an, it's not an angel. And I think something he says later in, in the, the extra stuff that he talks about in these books in the beginning and in the end, they have these little excerpts where they talk about making the book, is that Matt Murdock had everything, um, every reason to be a villain. You know, he was not uh, he was not a uh, uh, a super, you know, good child. 
he wasn't a his father's killed by the mob he gets these superpowers in an accident like there's always that thing teetering that that daredevil could possibly be a villain and it's surprisingly that frank miller says that he's actually a good guy um so here he says you uh he talks about doing mischief here the soon dad will call him in and matt will toss undercovers and stare into the night sky and wait for the dawn and more mischief. So he's a he's a troublemaker kid. Nothing too crazy. Just causing trouble. Just a just a young boy. And he said, but you have to be sneaky if you don't want to get yelled at. Matt is very very sneaky. So then here's this here's this uh, officer yelling at these kids here, and they're playing by uh, uh, of course the fire hydrant. If you haven't known this is a big thing in the city. Uh, some somehow they open up fire hydrants and everybody plays. Um, you know, and it was good times. Everybody plays in the street in the, in the fire hydrants. I don't know if they do that anymore, but they used to do that a ton as a kid. So here's this cop being a party pooer. He sees an overweight cop, so he's not going to be chasing anybody. And here comes Matt with a with a high uh, with a, a ski mask, and he takes his baton, and uh, he's on a skateboard, rides away, and takes it to the gym where he goes and hides it. And that's like his hideout. He'd go and and hang out at the gym. He loved the gym, even though it's mostly mostly abandoned now. Here's a poster of uh, his father, Jack, Jack Murdoch. And he also talks about uh, his father here, battling Jack Murdoch, Matt's dad. He was the best in his day. Matt heads home and hopes dad won't be sad again tonight. But there he is with that old photograph again. He never says who she was. And he's just saying, Maggie, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Maggie. Which is probably his, uh, his mom. Uh, and then he goes and gets his dad, who's uh, probably drunk, puts him in bed. Again, hot summer nights, chonies is the uh, best attire. <laughs> Here, the 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 next night, the mobsters are meeting with Daredevil's father, Jack Murdoch, and they pretty much tell him that he's gonna work for them. And Jack's like, you know what? Screw you guys! You can go ahead, kill me. And the mobsters are like, you know what? We're not only gonna kill you; we're gonna kill your son. So he pretty much becomes a, a mob enforcer. So when he's in the ring, he's doing good, and he feels like himself. But when, you know, that way he can kind of forget all the, the evil stuff or bad stuff that he's doing being an enforcer. He doesn't want to do it, but he's forced. He's forced into doing it. And then here he talks to uh, uh, Matt. And so Matt's father is telling him, don't use his fists, don't get into violence, because that's what get, got him in this, this thing in the first place. And, and I don't think he knows at this point that his father, or Matt knows that his father is a mob enforcer. So his father's like, don't do violence, don't fight, because big fists get you into trouble. And so it just happens to be the next day, this kid's picking on Matt, and he talks about how he's happy. He ends up like getting a fight with the kid and beating him up. And then here his dad hits him. And then uh, Matt runs away, uh, and then he's just thinking to himself. He's like, and even if Dad can be wrong, then anybody can do bad things, anybody at all. The only way to stop people from being bad is to make rules, laws. Somewhere in a long and lonely night, the boy's course is set. He will study the rules. He will study the laws. So at this moment, he decides that he's going to do something with laws. He's going to do a law. He's going to be a lawyer because from the the way the vibe they give you is that his father has never hit him. But with all the stuff that his father's been going through, being a mob enforcer, he doesn't want that for his son. He doesn't want his son to go down the the, the same path. So he, out of anger, he hits him. But of course, here he, he's really uh, uh, he's his dad's crying. He feels bad, and Matt runs out. And so then from there on, he's studying. And the kids tease him, keep calling him Daredevil, Daredevil. That's where the name came from. They, all the kids call him Daredevil. And then they're beating him up, but Matt isn't fighting back because he promised not to. But he still goes to the gym. He goes to the gym and just punches the bag and just, just trains to let his, out his frustrations. He cries and punches the bag. And then the whole time here, I guess the stick uh, starts watching him. A shadow, unmoving, silent, feeling the boy's fury and waiting for the day the boy will meet his destiny. And the irony, too, one thing I forgot here is that Matt, I know why this thing won't focus, Matt saves a blind man from a truck and gets the radioactive materials in his eyes, and then he becomes blind. So Matt, it's, Matt saves a blind guy and becomes blind himself. They do some surgery on him, they're carting him in. 
they do a lot of good stuff here to kind of fill in holes or like just the way they write it or way they the way Frank Miller writes it and this is just phenomenal and this was my really my first exposure to Frank Miller it was never um, this is my ex first exposure to Frank Miller there was never like I didn't read the Dark Knight Returns so this was it and this was just amazing uh, so his dad comes and visits him and then a strange nun lady visits him, most likely his mom. And then here's weeks later, his eyes are still taped up. It's like Matt listens to a pair of alley cats trading hisses six blocks away. He follows a Lovell's quarrel in a crowded restaurant, isolating the voices, not missing a word. But none of this drowns out the voices behind him. And so this is Matt's dad talking to the chemical company and how the chemicals got into his eyes and he, he's like you know it's your stuff that made him blind and the chemical owner tells him listen if you go public or you try to make a fuss out of this we'll tell you your uh uh we'll tell everyone about your involvement with the fixer which is the mob it's the guy he's working for the fixer so here's blind everybody's pities matt except stick stick is here watching him and matt's in the gym but he can't do anything because he can't see so Stick comes out of the shadows and says, quit feeling sorry for yourself. Get up. And this is where you, we get introduced to Stick in the first meeting. They're in the alley and he's telling them to feel the air. Like, can you feel it? And Matt's frustrated. So he's like, no, I can't feel it. You know, this is there's nothing there. And so then Stick starts smacking him around until finally he blocks Stick's Stick. And he's like, okay, <laughs> so you're out of kindergarten. Don't get cocky. And then here they tell you months fall away, hints of a new world and uh, hints of a new world play at Matt's mind, and the gruff, unforgiving voice of his teacher, Matt finds hope. So here's Stick. He's teaching Matt how to shoot an arrow, and of course Matt starts. First one goes out the window, and he just keeps him up again. Again, he's getting closer and closer and closer. Then he stops carrying it, and he finally hits the the wood. And so after that, he goes and he keeps shooting, and he goes and splits the arrow. And so his he, his father thinks he's studying, which he is. And Matt's still studying here, but at night he's sneaking out. He'd probably be probably a teenager here. And there's him and Stick running on the, the silhouette. They're running at night. And then they show him here. This is a great spread, two-page spread. Here you can see it. That's teenage Matt Murdock and Stick, and they're running on the rooftops. And then you have his father going on a jog, and this is Fixer. Fixer meets him. He's like, hey, you know, I've been doing pretty good, Fixer. You know, I'm staying in shape. And Fixer's like, well, don't get too cocky. Or, you know, you're not that young, young of a man anymore. We've been setting those guys up for you to beat. So then eventually you take the fall. So he tells him, you're going to take the fall. You know what happens if you don't. So Matt, uh, Jack Murdoch is here. He knows his son's listening on the radio. And, uh. He goes. He doesn't want to quit. He's like, my son's not gonna be, not gonna, uh, you know. He's like, I might be a loser. It's time I showed him. His dad may be a loser, but he's no quitter. And he goes and knocks this dude out, even though he's supposed to take the drop. So then Jack Murdoch comes out, and he knows. He's like, all right, whatever. He's like, I know you're there. Get it over with. So they beat the pretty much beat the crap out of him, and then fix her blows his brains out and that's the end of the first book I think they have this at, all together as a graphic novel I would highly recommend if you're a fan of Daredevil or you want to get into Daredevil this is a good jumping point even it's just a great story because it's classic Daredevil origin and uh, it's nothing too crazy you can follow it along and it gives you get a great feel for Daredevil and where he comes from and what type of person he is and you really uh, uh, this made Daredevil one of my favorite characters um, just for the fact how they tell the story and the writing is so good so I definitely recommend picking this this is Daredevil the Man Without Fear number one uh, there's a five issue miniseries so we'll be going through two, three, four, and five uh, all of them have a cool uh, design cover I'm not sure how much I don't keep up with collecting comics so I don't know how much the single issues go for but if you I know this is a graphic novel I'd highly recommend getting that I don't know how much that goes for either probably a, a, a regular um price here's kingpin then we have 
Electra on two issues, which really gives you insight into their relationship. So it's great. Highly recommend it. Go ahead and check that out. If you like what you see, hit that thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe and leave a comment below. Let us know what you think or let me know what you think about this series. And as always, take it easy, everyone. Thank you.